Hello, I'm Bonnie Browning with the American Quilter Society, and I'm here with the three judges that we had to judge the 403 quilts that were entered into the 2017 Spring Paducah Quilt Show. And I know you guys had a great time looking at all those quilts, so we're just going to talk a little bit more in depth about the judging process and what it's like. And, and so I'm going to start, and I really would like you to tell us individually uh, what your background is and why you're qualified to come judge quilts here at AQS. And so, so you've got the mic, Sue, okay. we'll let you take it. I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'm Sue Nichols and I um, have been quilting for a really long time and I um, entered my first quilt in Paducah in 1987, which was so exciting. Uh, I started teaching uh, quilting, machine quilting techniques in the 1990s. Uh, I have been a judge for numerous shows. I also have quilts uh, that are in the museum, the National Quilt Museum, uh, and uh, and that's that's about it about me. So. And it doesn't hurt that you were a best of show winner. A best of show winner, yes. <laughs> uh huh. With my sister Pat Holly, mm -hmm. our Beatles quilt yes. lives in the museum as long as well as the space quilt and. Uh, we have uh, another quilt called Two of Us that's in the museum. So uh, just uh, love, love everything about quilting. And I'm Katie Pasquini Mossipust. And um, I've been an artist since I was a little girl and came to quilting uh, 40 years ago. Have been teaching for 35 years. I've written 10 books. I've judged and juried many shows and bring to um, the judging experience my art background. I'm, I'm Paula Nadelstern from New York City. My quilts are exploring the symmetry of kaleidoscopes. I made my first quilt in 1969 in my college dorm, so I'm glad you haven't asked me to show you that. <laughs> it was large squares where I ripped up all my clothes and sewed them back together, called it a quilt. But um, I, uh, someone told me in my classes in the past few days, she told me that she saw one of my quilts here about 20 years ago hanging, and she sat there and it brought tears to her eyes and how I changed, how that quilt made her become a quilter and changed her. And it changed me so much by the honor of someone saying something like that to me. I um, had a solo exhibit at the American Folk Art Museum. I've written seven books about my, my techniques and um, I was very excited to be invited to judge this show. So let's go on to the next question. And that is, um, Talk a little bit about the variety of the of quilts that we have here in the show, how we break it down to categories and, and then the, the different uh, categories that you judged. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, well, that is one of the things I love about the AQS show. Um, you know, I love the Paducah show in particular, is, is the variety of quilts that you see from very traditional um, art quilts, uh, modern quilts, uh, just you know applique and all the you know beautiful quilting techniques it's just um, it's just so exciting to see all of all of the different techniques that are available for the viewer it, there's something for everybody uh, to look at and to enjoy and um, even if it's maybe not a style that you're particularly interested in it, it's so wonderful to see that variety and and just you know see everybody look at all these beautiful quilts and there, and there are so many, there were funny quilts this time. <laughs> there were very serious, moving quilts about history. And there were embellished quilts. There was quilts with feathers on them. There was, you know, everything and anything is at this show. And it's all levels. So we have the, the fine quilt makers. And we have the people that are just doing new things and want to share them. And that's really important to get your work out there and share it. I absolutely agree with that part. You never know who's going to see, see the work. Um, I think the reason to um, really to enter and to be there and for us is just to see the range, you know, like what is going on in quilting. And I'm sure people, f you know, five years from now will see different quilts than we saw this time, different types. Something new is going to happen and we just know there's going to continue to be this evolution of, of quilt making. I think that's fascinating. So I would like to just say that I entered my first quilt, like I said, in 1987 in the 
um, AQS Paducah show, and I was pretty new to quilting and really kind of naive. And I, I just, you know, I look back and boy, um, I had a lot of nerve to enter that quilt the first in that first show. And I came to the show and saw all the beautiful quilts, and it taught me such a great lesson that if I had maybe come to the show, I might have been a little intimidated to enter my quilt. But what do you have to lose? Because your quilt might get in, and then maybe your next quilt might get in, and you might then have this wonderful um, career like I have. So, <laughs> and, and maybe one of your one quilt gets in, and then another quilt doesn't get in. Don't take that personally. That just happens to be the number of quilts that particular year and the people who are actually, you know, jurying it to get in and stuff. But you just, you know, you just take that. We all have been in that situation, even though we're, you know, well known in the field, where sometimes we get, you know, a quilt might not be accepted or something might happen. And so just, I just don't want people to take it so personally. Right. It's just, the idea is really to, to come and, and meet other quilters. I mean, I was <laughs> teaching, the, we've all been teaching the past couple of days. I mean, the, the, the wonderful um, camaraderie that goes in a classroom and people talking about these different, the different quilts and sharing is just such a gift to me to be able to witness, you know, that. I know if they didn't have this accidental career, I probably would not have traveled as much and just I think the you know I think the, we all came to have a good time and the quilter is just an amazing person. Okay let's talk about the judging process itself um, because in the judging room typically our staff will at least hold the quilt up about halfway so that you all can view it for the first time so when you see that held up like that what is it that you're looking for? Well, I think that what you look for in that first viewing is really kind of the visual impact and what that quilt, what it says to you immediately. Um, then after that, you go in and look at more of the technical side of things and, um, you know, the details that, but the visual impact is so important. And I think that that's what's nice about seeing it held up and looking at it from, from a distance. And then we look at it up close and personal. And we, before that even happens, we get to the category is stacked up oh. and we, they fan the quilts back. So we get an overview of all of the pieces that are in that category. And it can be 18 pieces in the category. What's our biggest one we had this I think time? 41. 30, 41 in yes. a category. So you get to look at just a portion of each quilt and sort of determine, you know, do we have a lot of big winners in this category or is it going to be more difficult to find a winner? There's always a lot of big winners <laughs> in the categories I found because everybody does such wonderful work. And then they hold them up and we get to say, we're going to keep that for further consideration or it's not going to hold up and so that's the hard part is letting those ones go because you know someone has put their little heart and soul into it but then it gets down to where we have so many um, around six what do we try to get to eight mm -hmm. and then down to mm -hmm. six because we have to pick first second third and honorable mentions and it's very exciting to see the quilts rise to the top each one of us is at that point is allowed um, our point of view so that even if just one of us says, yes, let's keep it, let's look at it again, mm -hmm. then we look at it again. Then when we get to the p got to the point where we were really uh, narrowing it down, um, then there was this real um, collaboration discussion. and discussion uh, you know, between us. But I'd also like to just, to just say, I know Sue and I have had this conversation, that um, we kind of feel a really great quilt is one that you want to see up close and far away and see it again. It sort of seduces you up. It's a quilt. It's about the stitches and it's about the thread and it's about that, but it's also about that visual impact. So you need that back and forth and I think this system that um, that we were able to use here does, you know, gave us that very, very much. We came in for as many looks as we wanted. We were able to see it from far away and to me that really is what makes a great quilt. And I, I just would like to follow up on what Katie said, that I really do feel a responsibility um, to that quilter. Um, and, and again, what Katie said, that they've really, really worked hard on this for who, who knows how long. And we want to pay respect to that always and be respectful of the quilter. And again, um, in a critique format, you know, they're all beautiful. It wasn't hard <laughs> to find great things to say about any of the quilts. Um, but, um, but to give them a little bit of constructive criticism, you know, maybe it didn't get an, uh, an award, you know, why not? You know, a lot of times it is simply that there are a lot of great quilts quilts and there are so many quilts that are deserving of awards and we don't have enough awards to give all the quilts exactly. but it is you know it is that you know 
you know, it, it could be my quilt. You know, it could be my best friend's quilt that I'm looking at and talking about. And I'm always wanting to be so respectful of that person and, and their feelings, actually, uh, that go into the, the work that they're, they're um, showing for us. And just for our audience, I'd just like to embellish just a little bit on the visual impact. When they were judging, uh, they were looking at the color. Did the color make an impact? Was it the scale of the quilting with whatever else they've done in the quilt that made an impact? Or maybe it was just the design and the value of the colors they used. And you know, you don't always have to have high contrast. Sometimes it would be low contrast mm -hmm. that would make a difference. And so when you're looking at that visual impact, uh, I know sometimes people think that workmanship is what it's all about. Well, the visual impact is as important as that, that workmanship that they'll look at closer on the table. There's no, there's no question that's true. But also, we were really also looking, um, was there the frame appropriate? Was, the frame, was there too much negative space sometimes in the frame? Was there, how was it finished? I mean, that became you know, very, very important in terms of the visual impact, really, also mm -hmm. very much. Well, and as you all were sorting the quilts, sometimes a quilt got put in the release pile just because you already had seen another quilt in that category that was better than that one. And so sometimes it's a matter of similar styles being in the same category. Right. So if there were three or four quilts that were log cabin or some kind of a design like that, they're not gonna choose all of those. They're just gonna choose maybe one or two to look at a little closer. So you never know what's gonna be in your category. So that's really one of those chances you take when you enter. And you might want to look at the categories and sort of see which ones get a lot of entries and which get fewer <laughs> entries and think about it. Yeah. Well, yes, and we will tell the hand quilters, enter those quilts. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of hand quilted quilts to yes. choose from. So, yes. yeah. Okay, so, um, so why should people enter their quilts, whether it's this contest or another contest? Well, I always say that if you don't enter your quilts, there's not going to be any quilt shows. So we need to have quilts and quilt shows. And, um, and I think it is rewarding to see your quilt hanging in a show. Uh, it also is um, just nice to see variety. And, uh, you know, the more people that enter, the more variety we're going to see in the quilts. And it's just so, you know, I've entered a lot of quilts and quilt shows over the years, and it's just such an exciting uh, exciting thing to see your quilt hang in a show and you know I think truly it's an honor to have a quilt accepted in this show and boy it's the icing on the cake if you w win a ribbon but they're all winners I mean just to get in the show uh, you're a winner and that's that's exciting and that's fun so that's why I would encourage people to enter quilts. Uh, uh, there were over 800 quilts that were submitted and so those are juried first and then we get to see was half of them. 403. 403. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, to just get in the show, you're a winner. But if you're entering, it's like everything that you said, but it can build confidence in yourself and in your style. And, you know, maybe come one year and look and see what's happening and see that you can do it. Anybody can enter a show, and you should. I think the quilts are lit and hung very respect beautifully, like a museum. I mean, and it's your chance to see your quilt, one of your quilts on, you know, hung so beautifully instead of in your studio. And you have such a number of people who come here. You just don't have any idea. If you could, you should, if you were able to stand in front of a quilt and just hear all the comments, <laughs> yeah. it's just an incredible, you get goosebumps. It's an incredible feeling. And you've met, and somebody from Europe has seen your quilt. I mean, international people, Japanese, everyone has seen that, that piece. And maybe there's just one little, part of it that gives someone an idea that's going to push them forward. So to me, it's really that idea that, you know, um, it's wonderful if you win an award. There's nothing like it. But there's also just that idea that you are, some people are seeing your quilts. You're putting them out there. Like Sue said, like, why not? Just, uh, I really think to, to just understand um, that people are, are going to see it and they're going to be affected by, some th by something you, the maker, did. I think it's just a very beautiful now you all spent two solid days judging and not one of you said anything about those critiques that you wrote on every single quilt. Mm -hmm. What value is that to the maker? So 
as she said, the critiques are not our favorite part. <laughs> it's always very easy to find something wonderful to say about all of the work. The hard part is when you have to say, not really a critique, it's a what would help this quilt improve if it didn't win an award. And sometimes you can see something, oh, it needs to be more value, it's all one color, it's all one value, or you know, scale changes, or, or different things that is, I hate to write down because you're just remaking somebody's quilt, but if there's a suggestion, but sometimes it's hard to find a critique to say that would really help someone. So it's, we always, we, we always want to say if there's nothing that we can pick to fix, make it better, then we really shouldn't say anything. But we try to find something that could help. But it's very difficult. So when you get your critiques, don't be crushed. Just read them. See if it makes sense. I had a student in class today that says, oh, yeah, I read my critiques. And if the same critique comes up show after show, then I might look and see. But it's three different opinions. And you know everything depends on the time of day, the lineup that it is in the, in the lineup. So read them with a grain of salt. And Do you know one time I got a critique on one of my quilts and it said that the quilt needed more quilting. And I know you all said that a time or two about some of the quilts mm -hmm. in the show. Well, you know what I did? Yeah. I went home and added more quilting. The yeah. next time I entered it, I won with that oh, quilt. Oh, that's a good story. Hey, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that a lot of quilters enter shows to hear that critique to mm -hmm. to to know what could make this a better quilt mm -hmm. and i think that's that is an important part about entering a judge show that is willing to do um, critiques on the quilts of course this is a big show and there are a lot of quilts <laughs> and you know we have to limit the amount of time that we can spend on that i also want to be again respectful and i don't want to um, you know say anything that would you know you know make the quilter you know upset but yet that's I feel that's why sometimes they enter the show is to hear that um, you know that what needs improvement kind of comment and you know the Paducah show is the only show that we do written critiques on uh, the other shows we judge the quilts all hung and so we don't have time to be able to do that so it's really important when we do it here that that's a valuable service to the quilter I think it really is but I think for those I've heard people say well I don't want to enter because I don't want you know, I don't want that critique, or don't let that be the reason you don't enter. Just, don't if you don't, it. don't read it. If you don't, you know, or ask your friend to read it, and then, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But that shouldn't be a reason why, you know, why people don't enter. I will respond by saying we have four other shows they can enter that oh, they okay. don't have yeah. to worry about yeah. that. Right. Okay, and a new one coming up. Yeah. Right. Um, Okay, and so I know when I'm asked to judge a quilt show, I always consider that to be a real honor to be asked. And so what does it mean to you individually when you're asked to judge this show or any show? Well, I agree, Bonnie. It is a, it's a huge honor to, to be asked to judge, um, to judge any show, especially this show. And um, I, I, I get emotional sometimes when I talk about this, that, um, you know, after entering my first quilt, you know, what, 30 years ago, and now I judge the show this year. It was a very, um, it's like a bucket list thing for me. So, um, and, um, you know, it is, it is an honor and it is a responsibility. Uh, and we take that very seriously. And I really want all, every quilter to know that the, the judges, you know, really do um, work hard and really take it seriously. And the other thing I'm gonna say about that is that for me, the most fun that I've had all week is being at the award ceremony and watching the quilters um, accept their awards. And we all got a little emotional a few times when those winners got up on stage and you know, it meant so much to them to win that award. So anyway, so I'm gonna stop talking because I'm getting emotional. <laughs> so. Well, I've, I've judged this show several times and it's just so well laid out. The quilts are all in categories. They keep us on point. They answer our questions. And yes, it's an honor, a very big honor. And I like to hone my critique skills. I have an online critique class and I'm critiquing things a lot. So that made it easier this time to analyze the quilts. And, and so I was really pleased to be able to put some of those new skills that I had to, to work for me this time. And I was, you know, the word honor, we're saying it over and over, but it really felt that, that you know, the AQS, um, staff thought of me it was just really um, wonderful 
I also loved that we had that opportunity to really look at the quilts. <laughs> you know, usually we're teaching so much that and we don't touch. get to see, <laughs> yeah. the, the, you know, to see so much. And, and it, for me, as an art quilter and as a quilter at that level, I really feel it's given me, it's juiced me up to get back home and to, to work on my own stuff because I was able to spend so much time with the quilts. They really, um, and I was, I was delighted. Well, we appreciate everything that you did working so hard for two days, and now we've been working you hard teaching for the last few days. But if you, those of you who are watching out there think this isn't a challenge, just look at the three quilts hanging behind us and how different those are, and then to be able to take those and put those into first, second, and third. You know, sometimes you could toss a coin and say any one of them could win, uh, but for one reason or another, this is the order they put them in. And so I hope that you will, in the future, consider entering your quilts in one of our AQS quilt contests. Um, it won't hurt. And I will just tell a story, and I've told this before. The very first time I entered was in the second AQS show, and it was 1986. And I didn't tell a single soul that I entered that show until I got the letter that said, congratulations, your quilt has been accepted in the AQS quilt show. And so you don't have to tell anybody. And then once you know <laughs> that you're gonna have your quilt there, now you can just do all the bragging that you want about your quilt coming to Paducah. Um, so enter your quilts and all you have to do is go to quiltweek.com and click on the contest buttons and you will find all of the rules, all the prizes, um, the link to go in and enter if, the, if it's still open. So it can all be done online. You can even upload your images for your quilts online. And we hope that you'll be one of our winners here in the AQS Quilt Week soon.